the Fens, a vast, flat expanse where thousands of years ago great forests grew and flourished. And then came the peat, which choked the life out of the trees, leaving them helpless against floodwaters from the wash. But man won his battle to drain the Fens, and today this low-lying area is dissected by a network of dikes, canals and rivers, enhancing the beauty of this once isolated corner of East Anglia. Each year, the now fertile soils of the Fens produce a rich array of crops. And looking down on a changing sea of yellow and green is Ely Cathedral, a famous landmark that can be seen for miles in every direction. The visitor to Ely can delight in the magnificence of the cathedral's architecture. Shop in the typical country market, or just enjoy a relaxing day on the River Ouse. Ely is many things to many people. To the farming community, it has become one of the focal points of Britain's agricultural engineering industry, a tradition which is being upheld at the Hereward Works of Standon Engineering. With a skillful blend of individual craftsmanship and modern production methods, a range of precision-built machines is being manufactured to meet the demands of the world's potato and sugar beet growers. Autumn heralds a familiar sight for Britain's sugar beet farmers as the processing factories begin their annual campaigns. It's harvesting time, and no matter what the weather, it's green for go. range of Stanton sugar beet equipment is designed to cope with extremes of weather and soil conditions. But a successful harvest begins with careful crop establishment and efficient weed control in the early growth stages. Stander's experience in hoe design goes back nearly three quarters of a century to when Frank Stander built his first horse hoe in 1908. Four years later came the first cultivator and standard equipment was immediately in demand to cope with the rapidly expanding acreage of British sugar beet. Since that time, stand and hose have been used in ever-increasing numbers. Careful drilling, producing straight and, most important, parallel crop lines, is vital for mechanical weed control and harvesting especially when using multi-row equipment. Weeds can soon become a problem in a new crop until the plants are big enough to cover the soil and suppress them. And although chemical weed control is well established, success cannot be guaranteed. Mechanical weeding is therefore an essential part of modern beet technology. The stand and front mounted hoe combines many years of design experience with quality materials and expert workmanship. The mounting frame fits directly onto the tractor and a single acting hydraulic ram controlled by the quadrant lever gives instant operator response. Hoeing depth is controlled by two adjustable pneumatic wheels 
situated at the front of the hole. Independently sprung hole rigs ensure that the depth remains constant by closely following the contours of the ground. This is important for effective weed control. A choice of three blade designs is available to suit varying soil conditions. And a stagger blade pattern allows large objects, such as stones, to pass between them, reducing the danger of blockages without losing hoeing efficiency. The hoe rigs are mounted on a round bar and can be quickly adjusted to any width of row. Disc coulters are recommended with some blades when hoeing newly emerged crops to prevent the tender plants from being buried. A track eradicator fitted behind each tractor rear wheel eliminates the problem of soil compaction. Keeping the weeds at bay during the early stages of crop development encourages quick plant growth. But the battle against weeds is a continuous one through spring and early summer. The same crop some three weeks later, showing the benefits of regular hoeing. Stand and row crop wheels have long been accepted as ideal for reducing soil compaction and avoiding plant damage. But their use is not restricted to hoeing as many farmers are recognising by using twin row crop wheels at harvest time. But at this stage of the crop, the need is still for weed control. And by fitting rear-mounted harrows, the weeds are brought to the surface where they quickly dry out. The harrows are three-point linkage mounted and can be lifted from the ground for instant clearing. Hoeing is a continuous job until the plants are tall enough. Regardless of crop and soil conditions, the strength and construction of the stand and hoe allows accurate operation at high speed. There's little chance of weeds surviving where a stand and hoe has been. Standard's experience in beet harvesting dates back to 1926, when their first ever machine was awarded a gold medal by the Norfolk Farm Machinery Club. In the same year, a silver medal was added at the Peterborough Show. Today, about 60% of the nation's sugar beet crop is lifted with Standard harvesters. And abroad, in countries like Iran, Greece, Spain, ERA, and even Japan, the green harvesters have proved themselves in widely varying crop, soil, and climatic conditions. The Rapide tanker is Britain's most popular harvester. A feature of the machine is the low draft required. A 50 horsepower tractor can be used without sacrificing performance. The tank has a capacity of two tons and allows on-the-move discharge or at the headland. A full-width discharge elevator empties the tank in about 45 seconds, giving maximum lifting time even with one-man operation. The tank has been specially designed to minimise bridging when working in very sticky conditions. Power to drive the webs and discharge elevator is from the tractor power takeoff via a V-belt drive gearbox, which gives smooth and shock-free running. The large diameter lifter wheels rotate with ground contact and have low power absorption. The gentle action of the wheels lifts the beat from the soil and carries them to the main web, with the aid of a flail mounted between the wheels. As the beat travel up the web, the specially designed wavy clean links thoroughly but gently remove the dirt with minimum damage to tap roots. Any leaf picked up by the lifter wheels is separated out by the trash extractor and deposited over the back of the harvester.
The topping unit is offset to work one row ahead of the lifter wheels for normal harvesting, or two rows ahead when a tops saver is fitted. Tops and trash are swept off the row by the mid-mounted sweep flail, consisting of 12 rubber flickers, which will cope with even large amounts of tops. The stand and topping unit is unequal for accuracy. And even in irregular crops, the standard of topping is consistently high. This ensures maximum yield without incurring penalties for delivering untopped beet to the factory. In really heavy soils, the lifter wheels can be replaced by lifting shares. Here, the top track has been raised to show the shares, which have been carefully designed to squeeze the beet out of the ground without damaging the tap roots. Despite the atrocious conditions on this siltland farm north of Cambridge, harvesting is still in full swing in mid-January. The need for a 90-horsepower four-wheel drive tractor is a clear indication of the difficult conditions, especially at the headland. Two adjustable depth wheels straddle the row of topped beet, and the shares lift them to the top track, which propels the beet onto the main web. In spite of the wet condition of the crop, the topper is working well. Good, clean topping and careful lifting are the hallmarks of stand and harvesters, and the repeat is proving itself in all conditions. The Cyclone is a high output, self-propelled harvester with six miles an hour plus performance and exceptional maneuverability. The Cyclone combines the pedigree of a well-tested design with driver efficiency and ease of operation to meet the modern demand for speedy, no-nonsense harvesting. This makes it the ideal machine for true one-man operation. The tank holds over two tons of beet, but unloading via the height-adjustable elevator takes only about half a minute. As the tank empties, the slatted base is raised hydraulically to assist the beat onto the elevator. Hydraulic control of the discharge elevator allows tipping at various heights, making it ideal for unloading into clamps as well as trailers, with the minimum of beat loss.
which the yield on this Fenland farm is 20 tons per acre. And the cyclone purrs along over the rich black soil at more than six miles an hour without sacrificing topping accuracy or incurring lifting losses. It's a different story on this heavy land farm in Suffolk where sugar beet forms an important break crop for cereals. The prolonged summer drought has certainly left its mark on this field. A range of power units in the 45 to 50 horsepower bracket are suitable for mounting on the cyclone. Proportion to the rear wheels being via two chain drives from the tractor rear axle. The operator platform is situated above the line of work, giving a clear view of the inline topping and lifting stages. This inline system of harvesting has made the cyclone a favourite in many overseas countries, in particular those areas where drilling techniques haven't yet reached the standards accepted in the United Kingdom. Proud beet and extremely sticky soil are a problem, but the topper has done an excellent job on the uneven crop. The first stage of cleaning is the powered cyclone, which gives the machine its name. Separation of beet from soil is good, and there's little danger of the cyclone wheel becoming clogged. From the cyclone, the beat passed via the bottom conveyor to a twin web elevator mounted at the rear of the machine. There, a further stage of cleaning takes place before the beat pass onto the top conveyor, which carries them to the tank. Weight distribution is a deciding factor when harvesting in soft conditions or hilly terrain. On the cyclone, the weight is where it matters, above the driving wheels. The cyclone still keeps going when others have long given up. With the labour force on many large farms decreasing, the time available for harvesting is becoming shorter. To compensate for this loss of time, equipment with greater output is required. The multi-beat two-stage harvesting system was introduced in 1969 to meet this need. A standard trail topper accommodates three rows of beat. Power requirement is a modest 45 horsepower. The three large diameter feeler wheels are driven from the land wheels, ensuring positive and accurate topping. And although the crop is badly affected by frost, the three rows of tops are removed cleanly and discharged into a single windrow. With feed costs increasing rapidly, sugar beet tops have become a valuable commodity, provided their feed value is not reduced through undue soil contamination. Standen's answer is to add an elevator to the discharge conveyor on the standard topper, thus combining the topping and collecting in one operation. The trail topping units are individually mounted for maximum efficiency under all crop conditions. The knives are spring-loaded an important safety feature when operating in stony soils. A one-piece continental web carries the tops to the elevator via a cross conveyor. A lacerator is incorporated at the discharge point. This partially shreds the tops and reduces their bulk without risk of pulping. Like the single row machines, the multi-row topper leaves the beat clean and ready for lifting.
As an alternative to the standard topper, this flailed unit is three-point linkage mounted. The green growth is removed by two banks of flails prior to scalping with conventional feeler wheel units mounted at the rear. By combining the three-row lifter loader with a front-mounted topper, the two-stage multi-beat system becomes a one-man operation, with topping, lifting and loading being carried out in a single pass. The unit is built around an 80 horsepower plus four-wheel drive tractor, the topper being three-point linkage mounted for quick release. A unique feature of the lifter loader is its trash extractor. Any unwanted leaf travels up the main web onto a twin web mounted at the rear. This returns the trash to the field. The topper web and the side discharge conveyor are driven by hydraulic motors fed by the tractor hydraulic system. This allows the web and conveyor speeds to be varied according to the crop conditions and working speeds. Three pairs of lifter wheels gently pull the topped feet from the ground and transport them to the full width main web. A stationary apron fitted above the web can be adjusted for height to vary the degree of cleaning. Accurate topping, gentle lifting and efficient cleaning are the bywords of the multi-beat machines. And like all stand and harvesting equipment, their performance can be measured in terms of reliability and productivity. In all weathers, at all times, it's green for go with standards.